Solving equations is, solving logarithmic equations is pretty easy, right? If you want to get rid of a log, just raise both sides to be the power of the base of your choice. However, if we take a look at number one here, um, you don't want to raise both sides of the equation to become powers of base two. Why is that? Because the whole purpose in solving is to get x by itself. And notice, there is no x inside this logarithm. As a matter of fact, you have log base 2 of 1,024, and you could actually do that. You could get a calculator and start typing in, since you know that log base 2 of 1,024, you know how to set it up in exponential form, 2 to what power will give you 1,024. That's the way logarithms work. Now, if you haven't noticed already, uh, the Casios are awesome because it actually, all calculators do log base 10, right? But this Casio actually has a log button where it allows you to type in the base and the, the number. So you can actually type it in uh, into the calculator. If you do end up hitting this button right here, this is what you'll see on your screen. You'll see that blank spot, log base blank spot of that blank spot. And of course, we're going to type in um, the base 2 and then 1,024. So if we do type in base 2 and 1,024, you'll have, and then you hit equal, you have your answer, which is 10. Cool? So uh, just to let you know, the calculator actually does this, which is kind of good and bad news, because on Friday's assessment, we're not going to have simple uh, logarithms like log base 2 of 8, because now you can do it on the calculator. The calculator does it for you. So we're not going to have those on the quiz. Anyways. Uh, we did this on the calculator, and we ended up with 10, so it becomes a simple equation, 3x minus 5 equals 10. And from there, we should add 5 to both sides. 5's cancel. You have a new equation that says 3x equals 15. Final step would be to divide by 3 on both sides, giving you a final answer of x equals 5. We're done. Let's move on. So on number two, uh, we can't use the calculator anymore because we actually have a variable inside the logarithm. So right here we have to use algebra on our papers. What are we going to do with the log base 5 of 3 minus x? We're going to make it, we're going to raise it to be the power of base what? Base 5. So this whole thing up here becomes the power of this 5 right here, this big giant 5, this ugly 5. And of course, what you do to one side, do to the other side. So I'm going to make this 5 up here become the power of this big giant 5 right here. Okay? And of course, we're going to bring down the equal sign between the 5s. Do it in red. Okay, so we really have 5 to the power of log base 5 of this equals 5 to the power of 5. So of course, the whole purpose of, of raising log base 5 to become an exponent of base 5 is so that they undo themselves and what we have now is the 3 minus x equals, equals this right here, which is 5 to the 5th. Now the thing is, 5 to the 5th is not 25. I would use a calculator for 5 to the 5th. So 5 to the 5th is 3,125. Bring down the equal sign, bring down the 3, bring down the minus x. And of course, we're going to subtract 3. You get rid of the 3 to get x by itself, and you're going to have negative x equals 3,122. And of course, you're going to change the sign, divide by negative 1, divide by negative 1. That'll simply just make it a negative. So x equals negative 3,122. So we have our answer, x equals negative 3,122. And guys, what we need to always do, especially when we have variables inside logarithms, is make sure that when we plug in our answer, we don't end up with a negative inside the logarithm. Remember, the value that you end up with in here, I'm not talking about the answer, but the value you end up with in here has to be greater than zero. Let me repeat that. The value inside the logarithm has to be greater than zero. Now, some of us hear that and say, oh, well, then this, this is an extraneous solution. This is wrong. Because this is not greater than zero, it's really negative, it's far on the left. But you see, 
you can't look at your answer and think that your answer has to be greater than zero. You have to look at it after you plug it in and see if the inside value of your logarithm is greater than zero. So if you plug this in, the minus negative, the minus negative is going to change it to positive. So this would be a huge positive number, and that's absolutely okay. Does that make sense? Okay. So once again, the value inside your logarithm has to be greater than zero. That doesn't mean your answer has to be greater than zero. That means after you plug it in, the value inside your logarithm has to be greater than zero. Okay, and let's move on. Number three, let's get rid of both of those uh, log base threes. And of course, we're going to raise both sides to be the power of base three. And at the end of it all, guys, the book doesn't even show this step because in reality, it's, it's a waste of time. You already know that you're going to end up canceling them out. So you can just cancel them out. What are you going to have left? You're going to have the simple equation x minus 5 equals 3x minus 25. And then, of course, we solve by uh, moving x's to one side. I'm going to subtract x. Subtract x. And I'm also going to add 25 to move the numbers to the left and add 25. Okay. So uh, what we end up with is 20 equals 2x, which means that x equals 10. Boom. Before leaving this problem, before leaving this problem, I need to make sure that when I plug it in, the inside of my logarithm is greater than zero. If it's zero, it doesn't work. It's an extraneous solution after I plug it in. Okay. So let's plug it in. If I plug in 10 in here, that's going to be 10 minus 5. That's a positive number. I'm good. If I plug in 10 over here, 30, take away 25, that's 5. That's a positive number. I'm good. Make sense? Yay. Now, we have uh, number 4 right here that you guys need to copy down. And number 4 is different than the previous 3 because this is an inequality. And on inequalities, you have multiple steps to do. So here are your three steps. Step one, solve, like always, right? You want to get rid of the logs and then uh, solve for x. Step two is to set each inside value of the logarithm to be greater than zero. So you need to take this x plus two and make a side inequality, a simple one that says x plus two is greater than zero. You also need to go to this inside value of the logarithm and set six minus three x to be greater than zero. So it's really like if you're solving three different problems and you're going to get three different inequalities, maybe, in this case. And the step three, the final step, is to take your inequality answers. There might be two, there might be three, in this case three, and graph them on a number line. And you want to represent uh, your overlapping pieces, all right? So you, you want to represent uh, the piece that overlaps uh, with all three lines. And it'll all co become clear as we go through here. So step one, let's solve this thing. Um, let's get rid of the log base 9 by doing the, making it be a power of base 9. That'll cancel out. We're going to have a new equation. I shouldn't have said equation. A new inequality, x plus 2 is greater than 6 minus 3x. And now let's continue solving. I want to move the x's to the left by adding 3x. Adding 3x, I will get 4x. I'm also going to subtract 2. That'll cancel. And subtract 2. Uh, 6 take away 2 is 4. Let me rewrite that in black. 4. And let me bring down the inequality. So you have 4x is greater than 4. Final step would be to divide by 4. Divide by 4. So we have an answer. x is greater than 1. Yay? Yay. Okay. Now, Shayla, what are we going to do? We already did step 1. What's step 2? Set each inside value to what? Of the logarithm would be greater than zero, right? Okay. Whoa. So what we want to do is set the inside values of the logarithm to be greater than zero and then solve. So I want to put a line right here to separate my work. On the left side of this line, I'm going to write this inside value of the logarithm, x plus 2. So I'm going to go x plus 2, I know that that has to be greater than 0. If it's not greater than 0, the logarithm gets messed up. The whole inequality doesn't work. So I need to set it to be greater than 0. When I subtract 2 on both sides, I'll get my answer, x is greater than negative 2. 
So it's really a, a requisite of your answer. Your x values have to be greater than negative 2, because if it were negative 2, then this would be 0 and the whole thing would mess up. Okay, so we have one uh, requisite here. You could think of it as an answer, another one. And let's do this third one over here. So the third one, I'm going to draw that line. And I'm just going to go 6 minus 3x. I'm going to set it to be greater than 0. Then I'm going to subtract 6, subtract 6. I'll have negative 3x is greater than negative 6. Then I'm going to divide by negative 3, divide by negative 3. Gives me the final answer, x. You have to flip the inequality symbol, 2. x is less than 2. Okay, so we have th those three different answers. And you can't just write down those answers uh, because that wouldn't give you the correct final answer. What we need to do is think about a number line. So I'm going to make this kind of small. We already see those answers. I'm going to do a number line over here on the side. I'm going to plot the values negative 2, positive 1, and positive 2. So going off of this first one, what does it say? It says x is what compared to negative 2? x is greater than negative 2. And we all know that greater than is that way, right? Yay. Okay, and then uh, the next one, x is what compared to 1? Greater than 1. And I'm going to go with blue this time. Here's 1, greater than is this way, okay? And for the final one, x is less than 2. And that third one, I want to go with a different color, say purple for southwest. So x is less than 2. So here's 2, less than is this way. Okay? So what do we want to represent? Our answer has to be the overlapping pieces. Now, since I'm talking about three different lines here, I'm talking about the triple overlap piece. So the triple overlap piece, if I cover this up and I cover that up, that's where you have all three lines between the one and the two, okay? Once again, over here, you only have the purple and red line. Over here, you have all three lines, purple, blue, and red. Over here, you only have the, uh, the uh, purple, I mean the blue and red on the right, far right. So you want the triple overlap piece, that would be between one and two. So we're gonna write our answer between one and two, which means it has to be a compound inequality written together. So the final answer is simply x in the middle, 1 on the left, 2 on the right, with less than symbols. That's your compound inequality answer for number 4. So we are kind of running out of time here. Let's, uh, we do have two more questions. Actually, we have more than that. You know what? Let's stop this video here. We'll pick it up on the next one.